Hey everyone, so I hope that you have enjoyed our video feature Small Spoons Big Cutthroat uh, featured at Belter Lake in Whistler, British Columbia. Um, before we get into the fishing gear that we used during this trip, I just want to talk a little bit about the fish that we we're targeting, which are the cutthroat trout. So these are in fact coastal cutthroat trout, um, which are native in the Pacific North, where the coastal region of Pacific Northwest, um, they're not originally from this particular lake, um, because coastal cutthroat trout are primarily anadromous, so they actually travel into the ocean, from the river, and back and forth. Um, so these fish were actually from a river on Vancouver Island, uh, from the Taylor River. So they were brought back to the hatchery, uh, spawned, and the offsprings are raised to about the yearling size, about this big, uh, before they are released into the lake. So after spending one or two years in the lake, uh, they can grow up to 15 inches, 20 inches long, or possibly even bigger. Um, because it's a catch and release lake, and these fish are triple the sterile, uh, so they can just keep growing until they die after five or six years old. So potentially, you can get fish up to 25, 26 inches long, um, which are a pretty decent sized trout. We're talking about three or four pounds or, or even bigger. Uh, so if you have tried the urban trout fishery, the put and take fisheries um, around Vancouver, um, this is a good opportunity for you to, to move up to, let's say, catch and release fishery for bigger trout. Um, you, can, you don't have to fly fish, as you can see, you can simply cast and retrieve uh, fishing lures and catch pretty nice trout um, without having to go too far from Vancouver. Um, these fish are produced and released by the Freshwater Fisher Society BC and there are several different lakes right across the Lower Mainland where, where this fish um, where this fish opportunity is available. Um, simply go to their website at gofishbc.com and look on the fish release by species. Um, just choose coast, coastal cutthroat trout and you can find a list of lakes where these fish have been released and where you can do this type of fishing. The style of these videos are these spoons right here, uh, which are Gibbs Croc spoons. I've been using these for about 15 years and they are made by Gibbs Delta Tackle based in uh, Delta, uh, just south of Vancouver, Delta, British Columbia. And uh, you can get them in many different sizes. The ones that we used in this video are 1 16 ounce and 1 8 ounce. And, uh, but you can get them up to you know, quarter ounce, three ounce. The quarter ounce and three eight ounce are great for salmon fishing. So if you want to get into, let's say, pink salmon and cold salmon fishing later on in the year, you definitely want to try the quarter ounce and three eight ounce, uh, get a variety of uh, different colors, um, try them out and it's, it's, it's great for, for catching them. Um, but for trout fishing, because the fish are smaller, uh, you got to use smaller spoons. Uh, so these 1 8 ounce and 1 16 ounce um, about this big and they kind of imitate what a cutthroat trout will be eating, which are sticklebacks, a little trout fry about this big. Um, so by running this across the water column, um, you can easily trigger some bites if those cutthroat trout are pretty hungry. So now these Gibbs Croc spoons are great for casting. Uh, even the 1 16 ounce is very compact. Um, you can cast pretty far with it. Uh, they, like I said, they come in many different sizes, but they also come in many different patterns and colors and metal finishes. So you can get copper finishes and silver finishes. Um, different colors include orange, blue, uh, green, and, uh, and the metal finish, you have a smooth ones like this packed one right here. So this is smooth. And you also have the hammered ones like so, which are just little dimples right across the uh, surface of the lure. I personally prefer a hammered ones like that, um, simply because I think they produce a little bit more reflection than um, the smooth ones. So I, usually I prefer to use these ones. And I got a whole box full of them. Um, when it comes to colors, um, the, the metal finish, it really depends on the water clarity, um, the water color. So if I'm fishing in water that's fairly clear, I tend to go with a silver bright one. Um, whereas if you're fishing in water that's somewhat has a tea color, somewhat brownish. Um, so I'll go with some of a golden copper color and that seems to stand out quite a bit. So when you get one of these spoon like that in a package, all you gotta do is take it out and so you take the spoon out. And the very first thing I do is to pinch that barb. Um, depending on which lake you're fishing, 
Um, this particular lake, outer lake in Whistler, um, you have to use a barbless hook. So pinch the barb down and uh, then you're ready to go. You can simply tie this lure onto the fishing line. It's heavy enough for you to cast um, uh, fairly far, so you don't need to add additional weight to it. Um, the other thing I'd like, I'd like to do sometimes is, if you see how this hook coming up on the package, it's fairly big. Um, they, most of these lures are kind of designed for bigger fish. You know, it's kind of a salmon, steelhead, big trout. Um, because we're catching fish that range between half a pound up to three, four pound, I tend to like to switch that hook into a smaller one. So I put a smaller hook like that on. And, um, for a couple reasons. For one, the, the hookups tend to be better. Um, small fish um, are easier to hook on a small hook. Um, the second reason is the, the smaller hook will do less damage to the to a small fish. Um, if you have a hook that has, has a wide gap and you hook a small fish, um, that can cause quite a bit of damage to its head if you want to release the fish. Um, it, it actually might die. So th those are just little things you can do to uh, to, to make, make a swim spoon work a little better um, when fishing for smaller trout. Um, so small spoons, you want to go with light tackle. Again, light tackle means we have an ultra light spinning rod, uh, which is rated between two to six pound test. Um, it's about six foot long. In this case, I ch chose a shorter rod to use instead of using a long one. Um, because you're going to be casting repeatedly over, uh, during, the, during your trip, it could be dozens of times, hundreds of times. Um, a shorter rod would not tire you out as much as a longer rod. A longer rod, you have to swing a little more, um, so it's it can be pretty tiring. Choose a shorter rod, a pretty light rod um, that has a good bend to it, uh, when, even when you have a small fish on. A light rod has to go with a light reel, so this, again, this Shimano 1000, well Sahara 1000, it's great for this application. Um, the spool is big enough to put, this is a four pound test line, so four pound test maximum ultra green is what I put on here. It's enough line for you to get the distance you want. You don't actually need too much line um, for this type of fishing. The, the fish are not going to be pulling tons of line out. <laughs> um, and this you have a really big fish on, so you never know. So a small reel, light rod, and that allows you to cast a small spoon out pretty far, especially if you have the wind behind you. Um, like I had at the end of, towards the end of that trip, um, you can definitely get the distance. So to fish the spoon, um, like I say, you simply have to tie the, the spoon directly to the main line. You don't need to add any weight to it. It's don't need to make things more complicated. You just have to cast this out let it sink for a couple of seconds before we start real, uh, retrieving. The retrieve speed and how deep you should fish the spoon really depends on where the fish are and what, what your preference is and how fast your reel can retrieve. Um, because we're fishing for cutthroat trout that we're feeding um, pretty much close to the surface when, uh, for, for sticklebacks and little fry, um, when I pull the boat up to where I was fishing, I could see them rolling on the surface and that's why I know they were feeding pretty much close to the top. So I just cast it out and pretty much reeled the lining right away and fairly fast actually. And so it kind of imitates a little little fish that was struggling on the surface like that. And and that, that did the job. Uh, we had about three fish in the first a dozen casts and it really paid off the effort. And there you have it. So spoon casting for trout is fairly easy. You just need a ultra light setup, ultra light rod and reel, and a box of fishing uh, lures, a box of spoons like that. Um, I like to have a variety of different uh, colors, sizes to match the condition of the water where I'm fishing. And this, so this goes into your pocket. Um, we're fishing from the boat, so you don't necessarily need to be fishing from the boat. You can easily find lakes where you have shore access, you can fish on a pier, uh, walk down the trail down to the lake shoreline, and uh, just find the right speed and uh, depth uh, where you're fishing, and you can get into just as many fish as uh, uh, someone who, who's fishing from the boat.
There's one other thing besides your rod and reel and the box of spoons you should bring if you're fishing in a catch and release fishery, which is a catch and release net like this. Um, a catch and release net has a pretty soft mesh, um, so this soft material uh, protects the fish by not removing any slime from the fish. Uh, the slime is very important for the fish because it protects them from getting infected by bacteria and things like that. Um, so this net right here, it actually floats on top of the water because it's wood. And so imagine this is the water surface. It floats like that and if it's sitting here comfortably, um, you can just remove the hook and uh, without touching the fish too much and wet your hand if you really have to touch the fish. If you want to get a photo again, wet your hand, bring, bring the fish up when the camera is ready for a few seconds, take the photo, put the fish back in here and just let the fish go when you're ready. And, and it's as simple as that. Um, you want to have a catch and release, fish, uh, catch and release net when releasing fish uh, so you don't damage the fish. Well, you don't want to damage the fish because, um, well, the whole point of releasing the fish is for conservation reasons. Uh, you, you release the fish so it can grow bigger, um, so the other people can catch it later on. Um, if the fish is damaged when you handle the fish and then you release it, it dies, um, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of catching and releasing, doesn't it? So there you have it. Um, if you never tried spoon casting for uh, trout, uh, definitely give it a go. Uh, get yourself a nice light, uh, ultra light rod and reel setup. Um, a box of spoons like these, um, these Gibbs Croc spoons are not just available in British Columbia, but you can actually get them right across Canada, right across North America. Uh, so just go to their website and check out their dealer list and find out which local tackle stores in your area carry them. And we, we have lots of new videos coming up uh, shortly, so stay tuned, uh, get out fishing. Until next time, good luck fishing.